Hey guys, G here. Welcome back to Luna Geckos. Well, we're actually not at Luna Geckos because G's going back to school. So come on in and join us. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Yeah, merch. <laughs> she she asked if this was merch. LunaGeckos.shop right there already advertising. Do you need a job? Do you want to come work for me? <laughs> Who knows something about geckos? You all do, huh? Who has a gecko? Anybody have a gecko? You have leopard geckos? Well, let me tell you, for an adult gecko, it's really difficult for them to lose their tail. They only want to lose their tail when it's the last thing that they can do. So if they think they're going to get eaten or, or maybe their life is in jeopardy, they'll lose their tail because it'll come off and it wiggles on the ground. It's really weird looking. And then the predator or whatever was trying to hurt them or eat them will go for that wiggly tail and the gecko will run away. But it's really uncommon for an adult gecko to drop their tail. Babies, it's a little easier. So you're right, you gotta be careful with them. Now, most gecko species will grow the tail back. Leopard geckos, African fat tails, they, they'll grow their tail back. A crested gecko will not grow the tail back. So it's a weird little, they look like little potatoes because they got, they got no tail. So we have today, here's what we brought. That's a leopard gecko. That's a leopard gecko. See how they come in different paint jobs, different colors? It's called morphs. So they're leopard geckos. That's an a leopard gecko. Anybody know what that is? That's an African fat tail. That's right. You got a button. You want to pick a button? Come pick a button or a sticker, and then you have to give it to your teacher, and then they'll ask your parents if you're allowed to have it. African fat tail. Anybody know? They're very similar to leopard geckos, but they're a little bit different. And their primary difference is they don't like to eat the same things as leopard geckos. They're kind of picky. They like crickets more than anything. Yeah, crickets are a bit of a pain. They get out, they jump, they get on your head. These guys are from, well, because they're called African fat tails, guess where they're from? Yeah, they're from Africa. They're from West Africa, like all along the coast. That is an adult male African fat tail gecko. His name's Picasso. Why do you think he's called Picasso? Hmm. Why you think? Your turn. You think he's called Picasso? Who who knows? You? Oh, Mexican food. That's close. He's actually a painter. Picasso is a painter and he makes really funky kind of abstracty art. And this guy's named Picasso because the colors on him are very abstract like. Guess how long they live? No, oh, I don't know. I, close. Some have been known to go over 30 years or close to 30 years, but 15 to 20 is about normal and plenty of them will go over 20 years. So if you convince your mom or dad to get you one of these, they have to take care of it when you go to college. So that's an African fat tail and they eat crickets. I'm going to pass the crickets around. You guys don't eat the crickets. They don't taste good. Does anybody know what this is? In the in the in the baseball shirt, yeah. No, it's one of these kind. I have those. Those are a crested gecko. A crested gecko, that is correct. You wanna come pick a button? Now they jump. They have sticky little feet, and they live, they are arboreal. Does anybody know what arboreal means? It means, do you know? 
It means they it means they live in trees. These guys are cool. They have sticky little feet and they jump. They have a prehensile or semi prehensile tail, like a monkey. That means they can hang from it and they use it to grasp things. There he goes. These guys are cool. They live in trees. They're nocturnal. They have really big eyes so they can see better at night. Their eyesight is 350 times better than ours at night. How crazy is that, right? And they're primarily, although they will eat insects, they'll eat just about anything here. They're opportunistic, so they'll eat an insect if they see it, but they're primarily fruitivores. Do you know what fruitivores eat? No, I didn't call on you. In the back. With, yes? They primarily eat fruit. Come on, pick a button or a sticker. They're really great pets. Uh, we keep them in bioactive aquariums or vivariums with live plants and insects like these. These are roly polies. They're called isopods. Isopods are in, in the tanks because they eat the gecko's poop and they eat the, the leaves and stuff that fall off. Well, if, think about nature. If something out in the yard eventually disappears, it's because the bugs and all the bacteria and the insects and stuff eat it and make it go away. It's called an ecosystem. So when you contain it in a small area, you have to create a mini ecosystem. So that's what we do. We should have brought this guy yesterday. He has, if you look at his back when he goes around, he has like an orange five on his back. So we named him Cinco. What does Cinco mean? Yes, ma'am. Come pick a button. So his name is Mr. Cinco. And we should have brought him yesterday because yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. You may have a sticker. Absolutely. He's a cool boy. Does anyone know where leopard geckos are from? Hmm. With the hat on. Yes, sir. Something else? <laughs> Who hasn't answered a question? You, right here, young man. Mm, that's where the African fat tails are from. That's where Picasso's from. Somebody I haven't called on yet. Yes, sir. Well, I, 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 know so, I know something about geckos. What do you know about geckos? They, they don't camouflage. They camouflage? Yeah, chameleons more so than geckos, but... They do change, particularly these kind, these arboreal kind. It's called firing up and firing down. Their colors darken and lighten, kind of depend on their mood and depend on their environment. So they can hide a little bit. These little guys are really good at changing colors. These guys, not so much. Hmm. With the red Mario shirt on right here, do you know where leopard geckos are from? No, it's on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea. They're from the Middle East. So they, they originate from places like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, so places like that. And those are not necessarily desert climates, but they're, they're arid climates, which means it's kind of dry. And these guys live the mo most of their life they live in little burrows or caves in rocks and they only come out they're called so we told you that crested geckos were nocturnal so they come out and eat at night these guys come out at dusk and dawn which isn't necessarily nocturnal although a lot of people think they're nocturnal and then if they come out and hunt during the day it's called diurnal that's hard to say this is even harder it's called crepuscular Crepuscular means they hunt at dusk and dawn because that's when the insects are out. I know where they live. And these guys will eat just, well, this guy lives over here in Lake Charles, but I know where they originate from. Wait, I know where they live. Where? They live, they live under my house. They do? Yeah, I know they come from them. Come Probably not this kind. What we see here a lot are those green, they're called anoles. They're actually not geckos. They're they're distant relatives of geckos, but they're actually, those little green and brown anoles that we see, they're actually in the iguana, spe they're an iguana species. This guy's name is Mr. Mello. We're gonna let you see him. 
They are insectivores, not fruitivores. What's an insectivore? All the way in the back. You got it, man. Come on and grab a button. Or, or I think we got one sticker left. Primarily eats insects. So these guys don't eat any vegetables, any fruit. Can you imagine how much trouble they'd get in at your house if they wouldn't eat fruit and vegetables? They only eat insects. And they'll eat just about anything. And what we primarily feed them are these. These are called mealworms. It's actually, it's a, it's a, this will turn into a beetle. That's right. You want to pass these around? Don't take them out. They don't taste good. And guess what else they eat? The adults. The adults are not going to like these. These are called dubia roaches. They're from South and Central America. They can't really live here. So the reason we use these is because if they escape, into your house, they're just gonna die because the, the weather, the climate here isn't good enough for them. This guy's name is Thomas. He actually was the 12th baby that we hatched last year. And because he's number 12, we named him Thomas after Tom Brady, because Tom Brady's number 12. These are two little babies that just hatched this year. And they were clutch mates, which means they both came out of the same clutch, clutch of eggs. These species of geckos lay two eggs at a time. Some gecko species lay a lot of eggs. And there are actually a few geckos in the world that have live babies. Anybody know how many gecko species there are in the world? 25. Ooh, there's a lot more than that. There's a million less than that. There's about 1,500. 1,500 different gecko species in the world. The crested gecko and the leopard gecko are probably the two most common pets, but African fat tails are pretty popular and some of these other ones are getting popular. But the crested gecko and this little tiny gecko, it's hard to say. Some people call them chameleon geckos, but they're not chameleons. It's called a, a Eurodactylodes. Try saying that five times. Eurodactylodes, yeah. <laughs> you got it you got it they're, they're better at scientific names than me wally so these are new caledonian geckos and that's actually where crested geckos are, are from too so these are the smallest geckos on the islands and then there's crested geckos there's gargoyle geckos there are chihua geckos and then the largest gecko in the world. Of all 1,500 species, the largest gecko in the world lives on that island. And they're about 100 times bigger than this gecko. Does anybody know what the largest gecko in the world is? Nope. Bearded dragon is not a gecko. Iguana is not a gecko. Well, no iguanas, just geckos. It's called a lichianus, Rachidaca lactalis lichianus. People call them lychees. They're big. If we had one of those here, it would, it would be about as big as this part of my arm. They're the largest gecko in the world. They're 100 times bigger than this little guy right here. The smallest geckos in the world are about a half inch, so they're really tiny. They're called micro geckos is what people call them. And then it goes to the big giant Lichianus. Pretty cool, huh? So no more roaches. Anybody hungry? You want to eat a roach? Yeah. No? Chocolate covered roaches. I'll tell you a fun fact about leopard geckos is that leopard geckos are one of the only species of geckos. Leopard geckos have eyelids. Most geckos don't have eyelids, so they have to lick their eyeballs to keep them moist. But leopard geckos have eyelids. They are cold-blooded. They're reptiles. A reptiles, one of the biggest things about reptiles is people are afraid of them for no reason because they just don't know anything about them. So who wants to hold them?
so what what is are you like owner operator I mean, you do everything, right? Top encourager. Top encourager is that like what do you call yourself? Um, all kinds of things. Parent supporter. You, but you're the founder of. Cheerleader. I. You're I, the founder. Aired and I founded. I did. That. You did. We did. That's awesome. How long ago? Last fall was our first year. We did it for our kids. We needed a place for them to be able to go to school where. It was not a traditional setting where they weren't going to be sitting in a desk all day and taking tests and um, having homework. And so we wait. Came out. There's no homework. There's no homework. How do I sign up for right? this? Right, right. <laughs> all the parents want to come back to school here. Um, and so a really good friend of mine, Jessica Savoy, said, "I've heard of the school, and it started in Austin, and they're growing all over the world. And I think now there's over 300 in the world." We don't really have a curriculum. We all contribute different launches and quests, but it doesn't look like a normal curriculum in a traditional school. It's a lot of hands-on projects, real-world things. They're learning how to start businesses, build a garden, robotics, all the things we wish we could have done. In geckos. Geckos. Learning about geckos. Exactly, geckos. Uh, so we contribute you know, when we create something that we find works in our studios and then we share it with the network and it just continues that. Wow. And it seems like parents are really involved too. Yeah. They are. It's a, it's a tribe. It's a family thing where everybody has to be on board. You know, we're all on a hero's journey. We're all learning how to take a next step or, you know, start a new challenge. And it's, it's a call to adventure. And so if the whole family's on board, it's going to be great for you. If not, may have some struggles and so we we get together often and talk about new parenting language we can use how we can support our learners because it's a truly student driven environment so they are in charge here we are simply guiding them and asking them really thought-provoking questions to see if they can learn how to problem solve themselves wow yeah so I'm pretty convinced that the nuns at the private Catholic school I went to didn't know anything about this because that's not how that's not how elementary school or even middle no. school was no, uh, for I mean, me. No, I mean they create their community contracts and they follow them and hold each other accountable with these systems. I mean it's like a little civil society, and we're Socratic, so we only ask questions in the elementary studio. And at first, it can be a real transition for kids who have come from a traditional school. And so we just help them learn that they can do it and empower them and inspire them and connect them with other like-minded people. Wow. Future that's leaders pretty cool. right here. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you well, for we, having you. Are so great. You're so welcome. I appreciate it. And I've uh, I spent 20 plus years of my life trying to get out of school. And now it's really fun to come back, when, especially with no homework. That's it for today. I'm exhausted. School tires me out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, please like it, share it with your friends, be sure to comment down below, and above all, hit that subscribe button and ring that notify bell so you don't miss content like this. And remember, every Sunday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, new episode right here on Luna Gecko's channel. I'm G. I'm Erin Beth. Until Sunday, see ya. That was awesome. Thank you. It sound right, boy.